Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your guest host for today. My name is Dr. Nasser, and we've got something great on tap for you. We are continuing our debate series, the, polit- the uh, Daily Wire debates, between Ben Shapiro of the Daily Wire and Anna Kasparian of the Young Turks. It's part six of that debate, and we're going to get to that in just the next few seconds. But before we do so, we just want to let you know, please subscribe to our station, Hit that notification bell, like, share, and follow us. Comment below. We really want to see what your comments are on our reaction videos here. Let's get to the debate between Ben and Anna, part six. We're going to do that right now. Conversation about how we're going to pay for it. And I also agree that that what is happening in Ukraine, it may be an unpopular position on some parts of the right, but I've been an advocate of funding Ukraine. It seems like the, the single best defense investment that the United States has made in the recent past. It, it, for a relatively cheap cost, we've absolutely crippled the Russian military, which is something I think is probably uh, a good thing, globally speaking. W- with that said, there obviously is a difference in scale between the amount of money that we're spending in Ukraine and the amount of money that we'd right. to do Medicare for all. Right. And, and there are obviously significant drawbacks to Medicare. For, I mean, if you look at the NHS, for example, there's a recent article in the New York Times talking about the delays in, for example, ambulances, people waiting 12, 24 hours, literally on a field, not being able to get what they need. Because once you make systems national, you're going to have to in some way ration the resources. And then the question becomes, what are the resources? Either you have to increase the resources that you're utilizing, which means increasing taxes or increasing regulations, right. or you have to regulate the amount of care that people can receive on the other end, what my, my personal experience with, with sort of a Medicare for all system is in Israel, their emergency care is very good. And if you have cancer, you are in serious trouble. That, 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 and this happens to be what the statistics kind of bear out. The United States has the highest five-year survival rate for things like breast cancer. If you have a serious disease, people are coming to the United States for surgery, for treatment. If you have a broken arm, you're probably better off in a nationalized healthcare system because it's a fairly simple thing to, to solve, and it's not going to cost you, quote-unquote, right. anything except indirectly. But, but I think it's really important to differentiate the quality of care that is available. Are you tired? United States, which I agree with you, is fantastic if you can afford it. And when it comes to your life or when it comes to a family member's life, let's say you don't have the money up front to, to pay for the procedures or the treatment that you need, right? People are willing to go into debt because at the end of the day, it's about your life. And I am tired of seeing elderly individuals, retired individuals in this country lose everything, go bankrupt because of how broken our healthcare system is. It needs to be fixed. So on one hand, I agree with you. The quality of care is certainly here. It's, it's where people come to to get the treatment they need. But in a lot of cases, Americans go bankrupt for this. I'll give you an example. My mom was uh, diagnosed with... Uh, She'll be okay with me sharing this uh, because I've talked about it on the show before. She was uh, diagnosed with blood cancer uh, last year. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, and it was it was really difficult because her bone marrow stopped producing hemoglobin, and we didn't know what was wrong with her before she got diagnosed. She was just very, very weak. She had no color at all. It was terrifying. She had to keep going in to get blood transfusions. Finally, they diagnosed her, and they said, look, the good news is there is a medication You can be on this medication for the rest of your life. It's a chemotherapy medication. It's called Revlimid, but it's monopolized. And even though Revlimid was discovered decades ago, and I think the 1950s, if I'm not mistaken, the way patent law works with pharmaceutical drugs, I mean, they found loopholes and they were able to extend the patent, extend it. So there's only one option. And even with insurance, I mean, my mom's older, you know, she's she's covered and everything. Even with insurance, it's $2,500 out of pocket. And, you know, I'll do anything to keep my mom alive. You know, we're, we'll contribute to it. Luckily, you know, they found a solution. She's doing great. But if you don't have the privileges that my family has, if you don't have family members who are making enough money to contribute to help pay for that medication, you are screwed. You're either going to go bankrupt or you're just going to decide, I'm not going to get the medication and I'm just going to end my life that way. Right. And the- I don't want Americans suffering from that. So we need to find a better solution. And so far from what I've noticed in different models in other countries, that single payer solution seems to be the best option. Right, so I, I would obviously argue that you have to take into account a few different things in a situation like that. One yeah. is the cost of development of, of drugs. Virtually all medical patents happen in the United States specifically because it is a free market system. We fund the research and development, though. Uh, well, I mean, we do, but it's not even close to what the, the actual medical companies spend on research and development. What the federal government spends on R&D for medical product is so much lower than what Pfizer spends. 
that's see this is the other thing that happens i'm so glad that ben is bringing this thing up this has been a talking point from the left all the time that it's us our tax dollars that we give to the government well we don't give it to them they steal it from us they confiscate it from us in terms of taxes that we have to give but hey, and it always talks about this. They talk about this on the Young Turks all the time. Progressives, liberals, moderates, Democrats, leftists, socialists. They talk about this all the time. That it's American money that the federal government is spending money on research for these drugs. Baloney. I call BS. That's not what's happening. It's a freaking drop in the bucket. These companies and now because of the regulations, because of the FDA, because of the the you know how the FDA has grown. To go through phase one, phase two, phase three trials costs multi, multi, multi millions of dollars. That you're literally, it's like a dice roll. You're playing crafts. And this is what you see sometimes. I'll give you an example here. Stock market, you see a company. All of a sudden, it just finds out that it went through phase one. Small company in a drug trial for whatever... Um, you know, health challenger disease that they're looking into. Next thing you know, boom, stock price just shoots up because obviously everybody thinks, but they just got lucky. I'm mean, not lucky, but, you know, they're working on something. The results came out great and they can do it. But what if it doesn't happen that time? What about the next four, five, six, seven times they invest money into it? It doesn't work. That's not down the drain, but they don't have the resources to compete this way. So these multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical conglomerates that are out there, they have the money that's out there to put into this. And if they end up spending multi-millions, billions of dollars on a drug that doesn't go through phase one, let's say it goes through phase one, fine. Phase two, fine. It fails in phase three. Back to the drawing board. But guess what? So in a market economy, in a capitalist economy, that's what Ben is saying. This is where it's going to, that's why the United States, this is where the drugs are patented. This is where they're made because of the free market approach. And I'm not sure how we come to a solution in terms of those drugs when they're that expensive, like with this Revlimed. I mean, is there a way that if somebody needs it, that somehow it can be, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. I really don't. But yes, there's anecdotal evidence all the time that you can bring up family members and others and stuff and, and to go through. But that's a question that needs to be answered. But that doesn't mean that you just nationalize health care for everybody because of this situation on R&D. And it and takes forever for, I mean, the vast majority of these things are washouts. Hundreds of billions of dollars will be spent on drugs. By pharmaceutical that, companies? By pharmaceutical companies that don't go to phase three. I mean, they certainly provide quite a bit to their shareholders. So. Well, I mean, it depends on which ones. You, you're yeah. looking at the ones that yeah. actually succeed. I mean, they're, they're, for, for every pharmaceutical company that succeeds and actually becomes a thing, there are a dozen that fail. I mean, this is, this is just the way that pharmace biopharmaceuticals work. I was talking with my friend Vivek Ramaswamy, who founded Royvent Sciences, and this is literally how he used to invest. The idea was that you invest in a bevy of drugs, like a basket, mm -hmm. and the vast majority of them will die before phase three, and a few of them will be successful. How do you make up all the money to pay for all the ones that fail in order to pay for the one that succeeds. So how do you continue to incentivize it? So I think that the, the, the questions that we ask right. are the same questions, the solutions are different. So how right. do we continue to incentivize the creation of drugs that can help your mom? Two, how do we help your mom pay for the drugs once she gets sick without destroying the incentive? Three, how do we actually incentivize doctors to care for your mom with say Medicare reimbursement rates that aren't significantly lower than what they can get cash out of pocket, which very often you're seeing doctors in specialized fields just stop taking Medicare entirely because they're operating now across the table. They'll just say, we'll take cash only. This happens in the surgical profession a lot, a lot. Right. And so the, the, there are, I think, systems that are in between what we have and single-payer healthcare that have been significantly more efficient in this respect. Switzerland is one of them. Singapore is another one of them. My argument isn't with restructuring the system. It's how we restructure the system. And, I, and the, the, so simplic the simplicity of the NHS comes with significant downstream a fact, right. which is... The, the one other thing I'll say is, okay, so just quickly on the pharmaceutical yes. drugs. I mean, you will admit, though, right, that when you look at the amount of money Americans are charged for pharmaceutical drugs relative to any other country, we're being price gouged. Well, we're, 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 we are subsidizing the rest of the world in their price gouging is, is how I put it. I mean, the, the reason I say that is because we are paying free market prices and they are paying cartel cartelizes. They, they've cartelized their, price, their pricing structure. And so we could, theoretically 
bargain negotiate with the with the drug companies, and then all the patents will get filed elsewhere. That's well, that, I mean, that is the other downside. In the so very in the very least, I mean, one of the proposed policy solutions in Build Back Better that was nixed was allowing for Medicare to negotiate drug prices on behalf of Medicare recipients. Right. That was squashed. I mean, not entirely. I think there's like a handful of drugs. That no, it's, it's, and, it's for, and it's for this reason. It's right. because the, the great fear in terms of the incentive structure was if you allow Medicare, which supports a huge percentage of people who are taking these drugs, to negotiate the price, what you're going to do is remove essentially the R&D budgets of a lot of these of these companies. I'm, I'm not buying that Well, I mean, the, 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 the truth <laughs> is the profit margins in these companies, I mean... You may not buy that, Ayana, but it's the damn truth. Just because you're not buying it, when the truth is presented to you, you got just, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. What do you mean you're not buying that? That's exactly what's going to happen. If you have Medicare go in there and negotiate these prices, the drug you think a drug company is going to basically say, well, you know what? Yeah, okay, that's fine. We'll just go ahead and give it below cost or at cost or under cost or whatever. And what type of a business model? Where's the fiduciary responsibility? Now you can say, where's the fiduciary responsibility to the patients, to the people who need the drugs? That's not where the fiduciary responsibility is for a pharmaceutical company. It's to get as much money as it can for things. And then you know what? If they do have some programs, maybe there are some things that they can do to lessen the price, to um, you know, to you know, to give back a little bit. But to basically say, you know what? We're just going to go ahead and allow. Um, price structures to come in that will completely decimate the market in the pharmaceutical industry and de-incentivize the things to look for more drugs. Companies are going to say, what the hell are we going to do this thing for? We're not going to investigate any new drugs that we're going to get screwed on the pricing. I don't agree with you on that. Take, take for example, Moderna. Moderna had to sink tens of billions of dollars into the development of RNA vaccines, and it was a complete failure until COVID. I mean, like that was a, the, Moderna was essentially bankrupt before before COVID happened, and this is unfortunately the way that, that science very often works: that it fails and fails and fails and fails until it succeeds, and it costs and costs and costs until it succeeds. And this is, I think, a general point about business that people should understand. As a person who is a business person who runs a successful business, for every business that gets founded and succeeds, and people see the really rich person at the very top, they miss the five businesses that they started before that failed. Mm. And literally, for me and my business partner, it was several businesses that we had started before that did not succeed until we hit the one that actually worked. And they don't see the other businesses that started and failed. Most industries are more like the restaurant business mm. than they are like any other. Well, I mean, look, you're going to start a business, and you take a risk. And if you succeed, you succeed. If you fail, you fail. Uh, but at the end of the day, when we're talking about Americans funding research and development for these pharmaceutical drugs, I don't think it makes sense for us to then be price gouged by these companies, which, look, I mean, look, I don't have the numbers in front of me. I wish I did. But you look at the profits from these pharmaceutical companies, the amount of money they make profit alone every year, year after year, the amount of money they pay their executives year after year. I don't think you can make the case that the amount that they charge Americans for these drugs makes much sense. I mean, obviously, we'll have to we'll have to disagree on that one. Yeah. It's fun, but we're getting to disagree on this yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so let's talk about some of the other issues. I've had you diagnose the Democratic. Okay, so I just want to end it on there. So they basically said they agreed to disagree. And listen, there's going to be a profit motive. And I know the progressives and the young Turks, you know, they like to take the stand that we're, you know, we're with the people, we're with the laborers, we're with the workers, we're with the patients, we're with this at the expense. And they just completely denigrate, completely every single time denigrate, you know, these conglomerates. And listen, there is plenty of room to do that. But in the bottom line is, they don't, do they realize that these companies provide jobs, salaries for millions and millions of people? Now, I know what they're saying is that they're not providing enough. The workers are getting shafted. The workers are getting screwed. You know, it's the CEOs, it's the presidents, it's the vice presidents, it's the managers, it's, you know, those people up in uh, the upper echelons, you know, of the company. They're making all the money. Look at all the incentives and the bonuses they're paying to these CEOs and executives and everything. And the person that's, and the laborers that are making the product, making the, you know, providing the service, doing the thing, it's a little guy. He's the one that's getting shafted and screwed. Look, these people agreed to work at that place. They signed a contract. And any employer, any good employer is going to take a look and basically say that this is right now what the rate is um, you know, of pay or compensation 
for this particular job, for this particular service that you're doing, and this is the market rate. And if you think you can do better than the market rate, find another company that's in the same business as yours in and see if you can negotiate a better salary, a better um, you know, pay structure for yourself. I would like to know, Anna, I mean, why isn't it that, for example, you know, you know, Sank uh, is the president of TYT. Suppose Anna wins and says, you know what? I think I should get, um, you know, what Tucker Carlson is getting or Sean Hannity is getting, um, you know, because they're also, uh, you know, hosting shows. And everybody else basically says, you know what? We deserve more than what we're getting right now. We want to start the new pay structure for us. Well, as a business owner, you're going to have to say there has to be some place where you draw the line. You've got expenses to meet. If you not don't meet your expenses, you're not going to be profitable. So again, it's just a fact, just because these companies are making millions and billions of dollars in profit, they're also giving back. A lot of these companies do have programs that they are giving drugs at a low cost. And we're subsidizing the rest of the world, as Ben basically said, in the pharmaceutical thing. Maybe we've got to do less of that and take less of those subsidies across the world and maybe, you know, say, all right, less subsidy, less subsidies for the rest of the world in terms of pharmaceuticals. And let's, um, uh, you know, bring that back to the states here. And another thing that we could do is we could have individuals come together and basically let them negotiate with the pharmaceutical industry together. Have a pharmaceutical group of people come together and say, you know what? We're going to get enough members, enough buying power to say, hey, look, we're going to die. You know, we're going to work with this company and a pharmaceutical company, see if we can get the prices lower on this because we're going to be able to tell me, look, we're going to, we have so many hundreds of thousands of people behind us that are willing to pay for that drug, subsidize it. Let's see what happens. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. This was part six of the debate between Anna and Ben at the uh, Daily Wire. And you've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your guest host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell. Like, share, and follow us. Comment below. Let us know what you think of our reaction debate. And I'll leave you with my final thought, which is, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. We'll see you again next time, folks. Take care and stay safe.